Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My wife settled for me. I didn't know it when I married her, but I do now. She was in love with her high school boyfriend that her parents hated. She was with him all through university. Her parents finally told her that they would cut her off financially if she stayed with him. We met afterwards, and I fell in love. She did not. Once again, this was a surprise to me. We had a prenup that her parents insisted on. I was in it for the long haul, so I had no problem with it. I basically got nothing if we divorced before we were married 10 years. After that, it was an even split as long as I was not the cause. She was banging her old boyfriend our entire marriage. I found out after we were married for eight years. I was angry and depressed. I had spent eight years supporting her and her career. She has a much better paying job than I do. It is high profile and she deals with our government a lot. I decided that I could handle two years of infidelity. I had already done eight unknowingly. I filed for divorce on the day after our 10th anniversary. I let her parents pay for our vacation. I didn't do anything dirty like send the evidence I had to her parents. I just had a lawyer draft claim for divorce. Included was the evidence that the prenup had lapsed and our holdings were to be split. She said that I blindsided her after our holiday away. She doesn't understand why I would do it. I said I just don't think we are compatible anymore. I am prepared to go nuclear if I have to, but I don't want our kids. Yes, they are mine, I checked, knowing why. I'm keeping the evidence I have on her boyfriend in my pocket. I can blow up this marriage and make her parents pissed at her if I absolutely must. I just prefer to end things with me in a decent financial position to take care of the kids. Am I the a-hole for what I did? Honestly, I really don't understand why OP didn't reveal her cheating and make it the cause for the divorce. If it's for the kids, so now he's going to be the bad guy for them because he's the one who left their mother. Also, timing the divorce exactly one day after 10 years may be looked down upon in court. OP probably should have held out just a few months longer to not be so obvious. As it is, it is pretty clear to anyone looking that OP decided on divorcing earlier and delayed it because of the prenup. So, yeah, I think OP was clever for waiting another two years, but I think he could have been even more clever. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Base Masta 1990 says, If you don't want to go nuclear, which I understand, I would still inform her that you know and have the evidence of her infidelity. She definitely seems like the type of person who would spin the narrative to make you look bad, and her knowing you have this will make that less likely to happen. Choice Intention 926 says, She's going to tarnish your reputation and say you married her for money. You will look bad not only to your kids, but to your friends and family too. Tell the truth about her cheating being the reason for the end of your marriage. You don't have to tell anyone when you found out. Just tell them that you found out. Deny her the moral high ground, because at the end of the day, it's her who married you for money. Final Consequence 70 says, Not the a-hole, but tell her why. Tell her you have proof, and tell her you are willing to not tarnish her reputation with proof of her cheating, as long as she keeps it civil and allows the divorce to go smoothly. Otherwise, you run the risk of her blaming everything on you to your family, friends, kids, etc. Don't let her make you the bad guy in this situation. I am beyond frustrated right now and am on the verge of giving my fiancé, Alan, 39 male, an ultimatum that I really don't want to give. Alan and I have been dating for about three years and have been engaged for a year, with our wedding date in a week. He told me on our first date he was a package deal. His daughter, Rose, is his whole world. I was perfectly okay with it, and we started hanging out together. Alan's ex, Carrie, 38 female, is still in the picture as she and Alan are co-parenting. Carrie doesn't like me one bit. Alan told me that he and Carrie had been high school, college sweethearts, and she had always held on to hope that he'd come back to her. But Alan also confided in me that Carrie wasn't a great partner. She adores Rose, but she treated Alan badly during their entire relationship. You name it, she did it. Emotional aggression, gaslighting, financial aggression, belittling, etc. He finally got the courage to walk away from her when he discovered she was having an affair. Rose was maybe six when Alan learned about the affair. 
Unfortunately, the court still granted Carrie 50-50 custody, despite the amount of evidence against her. Rose and I have had a bit of a strained relationship. I understand it, having grown up in a divorced home that both parents remarried. She's a preteen and has some conflicted thoughts about her dad marrying a new woman instead of going back to her mother. But she's been really haughty and nasty to me. She makes cutting comments and will respond with, you're not my mother, when I ask her to stop. Alan has tried to set down ground rules, but she flippantly tells him that OP's not going to last. I put up with it because I love Alan, and sometimes, Rose behaves herself. Seriously, she's not a horrible kid. She gets good grades in school, she's in the youth symphony, and she takes dance classes. She's really popular, bubbly, and friendly when she isn't being mean to me. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. Alan and I have talked about it constantly, and have even involved Carrie, but Carrie just brushes it off, telling me to mind my own beeswax. We have tried therapy, groundings, and everything else, but nothing works. That brings us to tonight. A couple of weeks ago, alterations on my wedding dress were finished. I was really excited. My late grandmother, who I was really close to, made her own wedding dress after seeing photos of Grace Kelly and many women in our family have worn it to their weddings or have had their own dresses designed after it. As I'm taller than my grandma, I had mine made. It's really special to me. I have the dress saved in my closet, tucked in a garment bag. Alan and I don't live together. However, my apartment is close to one of Rose's friends, so we have an arrangement that on some days when Alan has custody, Rose will hang out at her friend's house and then come over for dinner with Alan and me. After we watch a movie or play Nintendo Switch, Alan will take Rose to his place. Today was one of those days. Alan was running late from work and called to let me know. Rose arrived and everything was normal. I stepped into the kitchen to finish preparing dinner, leaving Rose alone. If I had any inkling of what was about to happen, I would have done something different. Dinner was ready and I went to get Rose. I passed my bedroom door, and something about the way the sliding closet door was positioned made me want to check. My dress had been cut to pieces with a pair of scissors and was covered with glitter paint. My veil was torn to shreds. It's completely ruined. I broke down crying. I was too upset to even be angry. Alan arrived and found me in a mess. He was beyond furious and went to Rose, confronting her about it. Rose admitted it with a shrug of her shoulders and said, what's the point? She's just a fat old cow anyway. Alan confiscated her cell phone and immediately called Carrie to discuss a punishment. I don't know how or why, but this is the straw that is breaking the camel's back. I've gone through so much with Rose. I've tried to be caring and compassionate, and this is my reward? Now that my sadness has faded away, it's been replaced with a boiling anger. I'm tempted to just call off the wedding and leave Alan to deal with his brat of a daughter. This wasn't an accident. This was on purpose. But then I remember that Rose is a part of Alan's life. I love Alan, but I don't know if I can keep taking it. What do I do now? If after three years this is still at this level and getting worse, it will not change. There is no ultimatum OP can give. He is a father, and he will always choose his child. The fact is that he has done nothing to set hard boundaries. I don't think OP should marry him, because she will put herself into an unhappy marriage and misery. Also, OP needs to get the money back for the dress, and the bill for it needs to come out of her savings, even education fund. She needs to see the reality of what she did and feel it for some time. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Esoteric Enigma says, Your relationship with her is part of the marriage. I wouldn't get married if that isn't right. It'd be just as ridiculous as marrying him when your relationship with him isn't right. Little Miss Red Toes says, As someone who has watched my sister deal with stepchildren like this for over 20 years, it never gets better. They will continue to try and hurt you and break up your relationship forever. You can either accept this and live with the aggression, or give them what they want and leave their father. My sister stayed and she has never been 100% happy, because they are always in the background and their father always lets them get away with BS behavior because he doesn't want them to cut him out of their lives. Nizibon Muffling says, Call it off and send Rose's dad a bill for the dress. Don't get married. Rose wins but it'll be much healthier for you in the long run. A little backstory. Went no contact with my family at 18. Had my first kid at 19 with my husband that I'm still with today. He is 48, and our marriage gap is the main issue with my future sister-in-law. I reconnected with my family when I was 24. I, 
27 female, was basically acting as my brother's wedding planner for free. This is because two years ago, my cousin's wedding planner dropped off the face of the earth, and I stepped in to help, and everyone loved what I did because, I swear to God, I'm the only person in that family with even a smidge of organizational skills. My future sister-in-law, 27 female, is a bit of a nightmare to be honest. She keeps making comments about how I got with an older man for the money, and so now I sit around all day doing nothing. I'm a stay-at-home mother now that I've had my second child. I try to ignore her, but I reached my limit last week when she made a comment to my daughter, 8 female. Don't get me wrong, I love my brother, and I want to make this experience spectacular and cost-effective for him. I'm a hairstylist, so I agreed to do the wedding party's hair for free as my wedding gift to them. I hooked them up with a makeup artist I know who's giving them a discount, and the caterer is a friend of my husband who is giving them a lot of freebies. Now that I'm no longer involved in the process, everyone is charging their standard rates and they're looking for a new stylist. Last week, I was at my brother's place with his future in-laws discussing hairstyles. His future mother-in-law is currently in the process of regrowing her hair after chemo, so I was deciding on a wig versus extensions. While I was focused on her, my future sister-in-law was with my daughter, and she asked her if she thought it was cool that mummy married her daddy so she doesn't have to work. I asked her what she thought she was doing, and she said she just wanted to see if my daughter knew that I married my husband for the money. I packed up immediately and left. I called my brother to tell him I would no longer be helping with anything, which then led to the other parties I brought in raising their prices to standard rates. My brother thinks I'm being childish because now my actions are going to cost them an extra few thousand that they might not be able to afford. He thinks I'm an a-hole for not doing it for him, like I was before. Am I the a-hole? OP needs to tell her brother that it's not her actions that will cost them thousands extra. It's the consequences of his fiancé's actions. OP did absolutely nothing wrong. If she can't bring herself to be minimally polite to someone who is helping them so much, she can't expect that help to continue. Good for OP for not allowing herself to be disrespected. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Chris82868 says, Not the a-hole at all. Your brother needs to speak to his fiancé about her behavior, not to you about your reaction to it. Beneficial I 4578 says, Not the a-hole. You have a 20-year age gap. People will comment on it. But you are an adult and are presumably in a good relationship. Your future sister-in-law is a massive a-hole because she involved a young child in her mess. Your responsibility is to protect your child at all costs from this situation. Do not let sister-in-law be anywhere near your kids ever. That should be made clear even to your parents. But more than anything, Talk to your child and tell her that your future sister-in-law is jealous and mean and talking bad about her dad. That you love her dad and love your children. Reassure your child so this doesn't fester in her mind. The Venaja says, Not the a-hole, they both are. The nerve of repeatedly insulting a future family member who's helping you save hundreds or thousands of dollars. I wouldn't even be willing to go anymore after all this. My ex-wife Carly, 39 female, and I, 40 male, got divorced 10 years ago. We had been married for four years, together for a total of nine. About two years into our marriage, we started trying for a baby, but no luck. We went to fertility doctors after the first year of trying, and the doctor said there isn't anything wrong with either of us. We continued trying, but still no luck. Around the one and a half year mark of trying, a co-worker of Carly's got in contact with me to tell me he had been sleeping with her and didn't know she was married. I confronted her about it, and she didn't deny it. She said the pressure of trying to conceive was making her depressed, and the co-worker was a welcome distraction. She said the affair was about five months. I thought about staying with her and giving it another chance, but I really couldn't even stand looking at her. Being near her made me sick, and I didn't want to be with someone who turns to someone else when they're having a hard time. So we got a divorce. I took a job at another city and moved. I met my now fiance, Mary, three years ago. I proposed to her a year ago, and we found out we're expecting five months ago. I don't use social media much, but Mary does quite a bit. She posted photos of her bump and the sonogram on her Instagram and Facebook. Carly either heard from someone in my hometown or saw Mary's post, but she called me. She called with a number I didn't have saved, so I didn't know it was her and picked up. She started off nice and was just asking how I was. 
She then asked why I didn't just call her and tell her myself so she wouldn't have to find out from someone else. I asked her why it's any of her business, and it started a bit of an argument. She hung up after a while. Our mutual friend said I should have told her because it was very hard on her that we weren't able to conceive when we tried, and it can't be easy for her watching me have a baby with someone else. If I'm being honest, I don't see why I had to reach out to tell her that. We got divorced a decade ago. We don't live in the same city, so it's not like she'll have to bump into Mary and I. We're not friends. Our marriage ended very badly. Am I missing something here? Am I the a-hole here? It's hard to think that anything could be more absurd than the thought someone you divorced a decade ago for cheating on you believed she had the right to call you at all about anything, much less your current relationship. But I was wrong. Because along came OP's friends claiming OP should have told her. That absurdity outshines even OP's ex-wife's absurd behavior. Why is OP even referring to them as his friends? Champy Fuila says, So let me get this straight. She's your ex-wife. She cheated on you. You divorced. You don't want to talk to her anymore. And you had no news from her. And you're supposed to tell her that your fiancé is pregnant? Either I missed that part, or as I think, it's none of her business at all. Not the a-hole. And tell her to pound sand. And to stop stalking your fiancé on social media. It's creepy as heck. Kyle and Karen's kid says, It's been 10 years. If my ex-husband called me 10 years after our divorce to tell me he had a child with someone else when we couldn't, I would assume it was both malicious and creepy. Why would I care what my ex-husband is doing after 10 years? Not the a-hole. Putter G says, If you're the bad guy for not telling her, just imagine the reaction if you'd called her for the first time in years just to tell her that you and your fiancé were able to do what the two of you weren't. You'd be accused of rubbing it in her face and being needlessly cruel. It goes without saying that it's none of her business whatsoever. I doubt it even crossed your mind. But if there was a teller, don't tell her decision point, not telling her was absolutely the right thing to do.